I'm joined now by artist Erin Patton McFerrin. Erin, I'm so excited to dive into this because <laughs> you are an expert in, I don't know that you would say that, but I am saying, yeah. <laughs> you are an expert in cyanotype, which I didn't even know how to say because I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Is this a thing that everybody knows about and I just somehow missed the boat? You know, it's something that everybody's familiar with in one form or another because the same technology was used for blueprints. Yes. Um, this was the earliest form of photography, so the first photographic book was made with cyanotype by Anna Atkins. So it's been around since the 1840s, yes. and I still use the same recipe from that time period. But it fell out of fashion and then became used in an industrial way with blueprint, and I think that's what I love so much about it because it's so unpretentious and so accessible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, when did cyanotype come into your life? I would say probably about 15 years ago. So I am an art teacher, and when I was teaching, um, Stephen Perfect, who is an amazing local photographer, came into my classroom and we did photograms. We made a dark room and a back storage room and did photograms with kids with photographic paper and chemistry. Yeah. And then as um, I wanted to explore it more, I found nature print paper, which is cyanotype paper. It has the chemistry already on it and all you need is sunlight and water. And so it became a really easy, affordable tool to explore photography with my students. Yeah. So I did that with middle school students. And then when I started teaching kindergarten art, we would go outside and make cyanotypes. And I still, I do workshops around the community with it. It's just, it's, that's how it started. And, and for me then, I, I took it from the classroom and I started mixing my own chemistry. And I had more of a 3D background, so I was a sculptor, and I started building fabric installation art with it. So I would paint the chemistry on fabric and make images from collages and print giant transparency films to stick over and like leave it out all day in the winter. And um, so that's how it, it started for me as my own studio practice. Okay, so... You have the paper. Mm -hmm. You initially started with paper that had the the chemistry, the, the yes. chemicals. Yeah. There are two chemicals that are on it. I'm going to butcher it. Like it's <laughs> citric ferric acid. And so it, and that's actually used in table salt to keep it from clumping. Oh. And um, and another chemi a chemical. So when they're mixed, it's an iron salt. So it actually kind of comes off as like a fertilizer. And so it's these two pieces of chemistry that you mix together with water in equal parts and then make your solution and then I paint that on in my light proof basement studio. So that's how the chemistry is made and then it's exposed to light to create an image. Insane. UV light, not just any light, it has to be has UV to be light. UV. So I do have a party lamp, like a <laughs> UV lamp that I have used, um, but I prefer just to use the natural sunlight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You also, I mean, you create so much of your work now in the lakes and rivers mm -hmm. around the area. So you you paint your, the chemicals mm -hmm. on the paper, mm -hmm. and that, but you also put them in, like in the lake or in the river. Is that accurate? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, like you're totally right. So when you do a traditional cyanotype, yeah. you put um, maybe a flower or a fern on it. That's what Anna Atkins did. And it creates that shadow image. Okay. So where the light doesn't expose mm -hmm. because of that shadow is what creates the light part of the image. Okay. And so in my work, the water is the object. And so it's hence the movement. Yeah. And the, oh. So as the water washes onto the paper, yeah. it stops the process of the sunlight, and that's what creates an image. And then there's fun things like if there's algae or seed pods or sand, then that brings different textures. Different makeups of the water create different shades of blue. So yeah, it's just it's that, this, that might turn me into an uh, outdoorsy person. <laughs> yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I found that lakes because I learned from someone much smarter than me that lakes are more acidic. Okay. And so when I create work in lakes, it produces more gray tones in the blues. And when I've been out in freezing temperatures, I get purples. I've noticed um, the St. Joseph River creates different blues than the St. Mary's. Like the St. Mary's, I get more rust that pops up oh, with the iron. Wow. So whatever is in the water, if it's fresh water right after a storm, it's different. 
It's always changing. Yeah. Now, what about salt water? Yeah, that's different too. And, yeah. But it doesn't affect the chemicals or anything? Um, no, or, but I can get these beautiful rust spots on it because of the salt. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, so when you go in to make a piece, you must not have any idea how it's going to turn out, or do you have some control? That's part of that, yeah, a little bit of both, and that's part of a, a, a a huge part of my practice is meditation mm. and also letting go of that control because as artists we want to control everything that we're creating yes. and nature definitely has its own ideas and um, so I do have a goal in how I want to design. It's not a passive process where I just kind of stick it up to the water and see what happens but the wind, the currents, the sunlight does affect it but um, I also talk about it as being like performance art, and maybe that's a bit of my dancer background where I am moving in the water with the paper and manipulating the shapes of the paper to design oh. on the paper. So yeah. there is an element of design that goes along with it. So I'll go to the water and think, okay, this is kind of what I want to go for. These are the shapes I want to create. Yeah. And then when I get there, though, all bets are off. <laughs> of course. All bets are off, and what's great is the oxygen in the air is what produces the blue in the chemistry, and it takes 24 hours to oxidize. So I will go and produce the work, and then I have to let you it go. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, what is the hardest part? Is it letting go of the control? Is it, uh, what challenges do you come up against when you are creating your art? Lots of them, and I <laughs> love. I have a little bit of an engineering background, so I love the problem-solving aspect of it. Okay. So traveling with it, how am I going to get it there? Oh. So I have a telescopic tube that's light safe yeah. that I can roll my giant pieces of paper in. Um, how do I travel with it? So I figured out how to get it in a carry-on bag or ship it ahead and then I'll get there, make the work, and ship it back. Yeah. So the logistics are really fun to figure out. Yeah. Or how am I going to find water? And how am I going to find an access point? Yeah. Because even though the water's there doesn't mean you can get to it. Right. So there's a lot of aerial, like Google Map <laughs> research sure. to see where I can get to the water, especially if I'm traveling to go someplace. And then once you create a piece, how, do you have to let it dry? I mean, I imagine you let mm -hmm. it dry flat so yeah. how do you get it back to wherever you were that is not at this river's edge? Right, or... right. Well, the summer is my friend. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> and because I'm a teacher, I produce heavily in the summer. Yeah. And so the heat helps it dry quickly oh. because if it is wet and stacks on another image, it will make a mark. Sure. Okay, what has your art taught you about yourself. You mentioned that mm -hmm. it's meditative. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that there have been some revelations in there. Sure. A, a large part of my work is healing and through grief healing mm. and um, having some traumatic loss in my background. And, and then it was really in the pandemic. You know, I have teenage children and to see them lose everything that yeah. meant so much to them was, was really a difficult time. And yeah. that's when my work really shifted and I started going to the water mm. and I would go as much as I could. I would plan my day around it so that after school I'd have everything packed in the car and I would go. And yeah. you know, at that point I was, it was pandemic teaching on a cart. Like it was <sighs> scary yeah. and yeah. hard. And um, so it's, it's really been a healing process. And then, um, so it helped me deal with the grieving that my children were going through, that we were all going through mm -hmm. during the pandemic, and then healing parts of myself yeah. too. Now that we are uh, hopefully uh, on the other side mm -hmm. of, of that trauma at least, are you finding um, that that you're that it's cathartic in a different way. Is mm -hmm. it? Are you processing different things? Is there any joy in that? Yeah. In that you can process through your work. Yes, absolutely. And I went to therapy. So <laughs> that helps. Oh, it yes, helps. It does. <laughs> so and so it's really turned into a celebration. And oh. I talk a lot about it marking time and place. Mm. And so I'm going to this place. It is this day and this time and really being present in the now. Yeah. So it has turned from this healing and water is a very healing um, tool that's been used in a lot of 
traditions across the world. Sure. Yeah, throughout time, and and then it's turned into a celebration for me. And when you look at your work, you mentioned the differences you can see, the literal differences. But mm -hmm. can you tell um, the differences in maybe your frame of mind or or that that day? It's almost like a photograph in some ways. Is that mm -hmm. how it feels to you? Oh, it's a journal. It completely oh, is. Cool. And then I like to record what I'm doing, so I document it. So I document in the field the process. Yeah. I enjoy documenting all of that, and I share a lot of that on Instagram, and then that's also kind of a visual journal of the time and place. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, when I when they booked this interview, <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm like, cyanotypes, I'm looking it up. I'm thinking, well, it looks really cool, but I don't know, maybe not my jam. I am in. I'm fully in. I I want to be outdoorsy. I want to create these beautiful pieces. Um, yes, girl. I love yes. It. <laughs> I mean, they're so they're just gorgeous. And and not that I think I could rise to the level um, that that you are, but what a what a beautiful way to create. Thank so you. thank you for for teaching young people. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, hats off to you for that, but also for bringing beauty in the world and and taking not so easy things and and turning them into art. Mm, thank you. And thank you mostly for sitting down with me today. Oh, this was great. <laughs> thank you so much. Arts in Focus on PBS Fort Wayne is funded in part by 